Welcome back. Jason Vale used to be as bad as the rest of us. Well, at least that's what he tells us. He craved chocolate, drink cigarettes, and drank, drank too much. Cigarettes. He craved, he craved chocolate, no smoked cigarettes, and drank too much. <laughs> but he has turned his life around, and now he's one of the most successful health and lifestyle coaches around. Now his fifth book, Turbocharge Your Life in 14 Days, is proven to be yet another bestseller. And it, it, this time it's not just a book about smoothies and juicing, according to Jason. It's a lifestyle plan. He's here with us, so tell us about it. Hi, you. Morning. Very welcome, morning. as always. Why is this different from the other ones? Uh, because the other ones are, are mainly about getting into juicing, uh, telling you why juicing is good and why certain other foods are bad for you. Um, this is much more about finally getting people um, off of their butts. I mean, the main concept behind this book is is what I call the, the butt syndrome. I mentioned it to Aid earlier, mm. um, but I can't because I haven't got the time. But I can't because I've got children. But I can't because I can't afford to get healthy. But 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 but, and people come up with a million different types of butt as to why they can't get the body and the health energy that they crave. The problem tends to be the, the more butts somebody tends to have, the, the larger butt somebody <laughs> tends to have. So, so the idea behind the book is to literally remove the butts so that you can put things in perspective and literally turbocharge your life in the space of only two weeks. The results that we're having in the space of two weeks are nothing short of remarkable, phenomenal, etc. because we deal with both the psychology mm. and the physiology. Because just because somebody's thick physically, it doesn't make them thick mentally. One thing I used to hate about being overweight was what I call the state the obvious brigade. They'd say if you ate more fruits and vegetables, did some juicing, went down the gym more, you'd be slim and healthy. Well, no shoot Sherlock, I hadn't figured that out myself. People know exactly what to eat in order to be healthy. They what also know it, if they Jason? did exercise, is they'd it, be is healthy. Is it time management or something? Is it, you know, you're kind of, you have a bossy approach in this book. It is, it is, it's more of a bossy approach, but it's also the, the, the buts that I talk about here are based on fear. Um, because if, if somebody was to say to somebody, look, or a doctor said, you should have no more sardines ever again. No one would have a problem with no more sardines because there's no emotional attachment on a mental or a physical level to sardines because they're not a drug-based food. We haven't been drummed in since, the, since childhood that you know it's pleasure you can't measure from sardines or it makes you work, rest and play. The combination between the psychology, the brainwashing that we've had since birth, and also the physiology, the drug-like foods, make people emotionally attached like a relationship. So trying to end the relationship with food can sometimes be just as painful if you go about it the wrong way as breaking any kind of relationship. So what's the right way? The right way is getting to the right frame of mind by understanding that you're not making a sacrifice. The only difference between somebody who's on a diet and somebody who's not on a diet is the mentality. It's not about the food. So, so this is like the Jamie's dinner philosophy of, listen, you're eating this stuff because you think this is what school dinner should be, but school dinners could be this. Give it a try for a while and you, you find that this is as tasty or tastier than this other rubbish that you're eating and in actual fact it's much better for you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, people who try the turbocharged smoothie, for example, which, is, which will become people's breakfast, and people who went on the two-week program have now been on it. You know, we, we did experiments last year on this. have now been on it for like six months um, because it's not just about the two-week plan. It's a lifestyle. But unlike Jamie's dinners, which will go in and say, look, let's hide a pea inside some other food to try and get the nutrients to them. Mm. This is about, look, you, sometimes just mixing bad stuff with good stuff isn't a way to get the good stuff in. It's still going to try and find its way in. Mm. It's you, about changing the psychology so that somebody doesn't feel deprived about not having certain things. And that's the key, because otherwise you're always going to feel like you're on a diet, as most people do. You also have a section in there about smoking. You claim that you can make people give up smoking. Well, not during the two-week plan. But, but I mean, there, there's, there's the seven deadly dietary sins that are in there, the six essential human needs that are in there, which we'll tap on into a minute. Nicotine is like eighth in the seven deadly sins because it's not really a food, um, but it needs to go in there because the amount of people I know, I mean, I used to smoke heavily, 40, 60 cigarettes a day, and it showed you a very simple approach to stopping smoking. Well, I did that course, the Alan Carr course once, and I thought it was the biggest heap of nonsense. Mm. Ever in the I can't of the world. comment on that. And it cost <laughs> 200 and something. It was the worst, my worst investment ever, I have to say. Well, I can't comment on that. Yeah, I'm not um, asking uh, to. I'm just sharing this with the nation. Okay. And I, you know, for someone to say that within a few hours that you can read something or that you can, you know, change your mind, I, I find that maybe I'm just very 
strong-minded. But I find that difficult to... Oh, most people, listen, I would have thought it impossible a few years ago. I would have poo-pooed the whole thing 100%. I would be sitting there indoors now going, oh, it's another fad, it's another... I mean, I would. Even with me saying that makes it sound like it isn't again. I mean, it, I'd be so sceptical, it's unreal. But if you start the turbocharge this breakfast, do you think that'll lead to other things as it's well? It's not just... It's not about... I must stress this enough. If somebody just literally picked up the book and went straight to the 14-day program, they would fail. And the reason why they would fail is because they haven't changed their psychology. And the key behind it is to change the psychology. Once you've done that part of it, so you don't feel deprived, I'll emphasize that as much as I can, then you can find it easy. And then you'll find some stuff out about food that you might not have known. I mean, a lot of people don't understand why they are eating certain things. They know why they, they shouldn't eat it. Everybody knows why they shouldn't eat sugar and everything else. But why are they eating it? And I don't just mean because of what happened when they were four or any of this stuff. We've all got a story, as the book says. You know, stop using your story to prevent you from moving forward in life. Okay, well, and you know, if it didn't work, you'd have been found out after book one. You're on book five, so you must be doing something right. Uh, and I don't mean that in a patronising way. Um, um, obviously, you're doing a lot right. Um, but it's a healthy little dose of cynicism because I always think that anything that says it'll, your life can turn around in two weeks, yeah. it, m it makes it sound too easy. And that's a quick fix. And people instantly go for quick fixes. And the kind of people absolutely. who go for quick fixes inevitably fail. But it's be absolutely, I agree with that. But it's beyond the 14-day plan. The 14-day plan, it normally takes about 21 days to really adjust your lifestyle and get into a new habit of mm -hmm. behavior. Um, however, you say it takes skeptical about your life changing in two weeks. Your life changes in a moment. Your life changes the moment you make a concrete decision. That's true okay. of anything. And if so, people see themselves losing a few pounds, it does make them, it spurs them on. Really and also, it's honest. not just for people who need to lose weight. I must yeah. emphasize that. I mean, if you're already thin, for example, or slim, you're not going to lose the 10 pounds in mm. the two weeks or 14 no. pounds. You don't need to. But what you will do is you will be free from what I call the food trap fully. Um, I know people who, who even read Slim for Life and, and was kind of okay for a while and whatever, and then some of them started to slip back in. But, but this, because it's more of a come on, get on with it approach, but putting things into the right perspective okay. and shattering all the this, yeah. this skepticism and everything else, um, I challenge anybody to, to pick up the book, read it, and not be completely inspired to do it. All right, Jason, we'll have to leave it at that. The Juice Master, turbocharge your life in 14 days. Very quickly, the juices that you make, can they be kept in the fridge for how long? Yeah, they can normally, it depends on the juicer. It's not an easy uh, question. Put them in a flask. They last for a day or so, but all the tips are there on the website, which is juicemaster.com. Juicemaster.com. Right. Juice Pleasure Cheers. as always.